Okay, so over here, we can have a, a good look at what we got. So there we go, that's it done in the white. It's like an off-white, and it's one of those things, don't get overly uh, taken with the color of it now. It's when you get everything else onto it. And by those colors on there, we're obviously talking about these. Now, obviously, we're gonna use the actual decals. We've got some warm water just here, and we're gonna go around and place them on. To be honest, it's really straightforward. They're really nice decals, and it's not gonna take too long, I think, to get them all on there. Once they're on, we can seal them down. Once they're sealed down, we can pull this thing apart, and we're gonna take it all apart, and we're gonna do all the little sub areas as individuals and we can super detail them then get in there really tight then we can put it together and generally weather it over so next up I'm gonna crack on with the deckling okay so deckling all completed as we can see you can see in down here now it's looking a little bit shiny this is because it's had a coat of uh, clear just normal floor clear right the way over it just two coats very light ones just to give it some texture because uh, obviously coming in with the next weathering and to protect the decals generally the decals all went down very well apart from perhaps the exception was this guy just here it's looking a bit shine it's had another coat of x20a usual thing with this if they don't bite down x20a gives them uh, you know a great sort of bite pulls them down gets rid of any sort of silvering you might have and all the rest of it just be careful though because it's obviously acrylic two brushes and you can end up taking the paint away or you can make the paint physically start to bleed get into your decor and can ruin it so just be as a last resort so what we can actually do now this has been drying off is start to come around and put this thing uh well say so put it take it apart okay so what we're going to do is completely dismantle this now all right now it should come apart because the paint should just click away because it's completely dry and all the rest of it and obviously any decals we have and things like that so actually we can come in like this and then hopefully, if we remember which way this is going to go, we might ease this guy apart. And when we say ease it apart, don't just pull it because you don't want to cause any st structural failures anywhere. So we're just going to ease this guy apart. All right. And hopefully the top comes away now. And we've got these bottom sections if you wanted to pop out and all the rest of it. But I'm thinking for what I'm planning on here, we should be okay just to do these little areas so we're just going to take this out okay and this guy out just biting a little bit as i say if it's not going to go i'm not going to force it but the plan being is hopefully we can actually get these halves apart okay so i might need a nice blade just down in here just to encourage them apart there we go. Okay, again, we're not going to over force anything. And say so if it doesn't want to go, I'm not going to really enforce it on there. What happens is there may be a little bit of glue because we actually glued this pipework down the front. What we're going to do is we're going to take a, a bit of a step back on that one. And this one's not going to come off either but the main problem ones were these to be honest so these are the ones we wanted out of here okay we wanted these two and we want these three okay so hopefully these should all pop back out okay just like so want to come out and get that one down that's those down just out of the way so if we're going to repaint those completely separate okay and we can weather in here because getting into this side and down in this side is going to be a little bit tricky all right so we can actually go in there and weather those up and take care of them very very straightforward this piping work wants to be a lighter color as well so it's quite nice that it is on the top but these guys here are the ones we really wanted to look at okay to really sort of you know give them color depth and we can get in here and hand paint some of the details which is what is really going to make this thing pop and come to life doing it in there just be a little bit difficult a little bit clumsy and obviously we don't really want to get anything on the outer areas we want these to be quite clean and pristine mainly on the top section down here okay so this enables us if we wanted to to start off you could spray these black come in and dry brush them and everything else like that what i'm thinking though is washes down here to start with because a lot of this pipe work i think is going to be quite a nice color so what we're going to do check some references get some references to this pulled off have a look at the piping 
Make sure you know that the colors are gonna be correct and various things like that. Hand paint those and then heavily wash and then dry brush just so they're in situ and then we can sort of fit them back in. These guys will go exactly the same, okay? But we're gonna try these more with washes. They're smaller ones, not as big as detail down here and we should be able to get in there. Bit unfortunate we couldn't get it apart but it's not a be all and end all because I don't wanna force it because we don't wanna break anything. Stress the plastic, make it bend and all those areas. At the same time as well, we can detail up the gear so this can be done with washes. You can get in there a lot easier. I'm gonna have these as a soft fit, so if you wanted to, obviously you could take them off or and then have to put it in there with the gear up in an in-flight pose if you wanted to, or do it as gear down, whichever way you wanted to do it. Okay, so after having a look around the internet uh, and some of the reference books I've got and the various things, and we're trying to do these little guys down here, uh, it's become apparent that actually they're different. Each photo I look at them looks slightly different. Now, I'm not sure if it's because the quality of the photos, like nobody's taken a photo of that, okay, uh, that I can find anyway. But a lot of them seem to be just an overall effect. Now, this is something obviously is a lot to do with film work because there's no point doing very fine details in film studio work because technically in the day, okay, before HD and IMAX and all the rest of it, you wouldn't see them anyway. So it had to be almost like stage uh, paint uh, for actors. They make it bigger, brighter, so people in the audience can see it. Same type of thing applied to here. So in some ways, um, it's a bit like kicking yourself up the butt doing this because in some ways you want it to be as authentic as possible but in other ways you want to detail it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off ship here. Uh, I'm going to do it my way, all right? So by no means is this going to be screen accurate. This is more a case of being what I want it to be. So I want some nice detailing in there. So just to show you the real differences, you can see down on these two here, we've actually got, if we just bring the side cam in nice and tight, you might see we've got these two here. Uh, where are you? There's one there. <laughs> And one there. These guys here, we've got one that's done and one that's not. Okay, now this guy here, as you can see, is looking quite sort of plain. It's got some nice colouring in there. Okay, but this one really pops. Now this is because all it's had is a straightforward wash with a little bit of AK Interactive's grease. Okay, we've got their other one over here, which is like an engine oil colour. And I think those are going to work really, really well. So down in here, we've actually done these bays with it okay so they've got those in there already they're drying back and straight away you can see it gives everything a nice shadow and depth so that's going to be my basis for doing this by using both colors as well we should be able to sort of make things different okay and sort of jump out and pop in some areas and not in others so the other thing we've got down here if i get my little brush this is all we want we've got a little bit of the ak aluminium stuff down here now the idea with this is this is going to act like a wash as well because it's going to be extremely thin but what we can actually do is just pop in here and pick out some of the hoses and details and things like that without uh, having to paint them them all in all right because this stuff technically doesn't like to be hand painted but we can make things nice and silver just like that okay so you could use the AK stuff we've got other stuff up there as well or you could use the wax ones just for touching in a few little hoses things like that so what I'm going to do is just going to pop around picking out hoses uh, bits and piping things like that some areas might put a little bit of black on some areas we actually might put in various other things so it just depends on how you want it to be so just grabbing my little bit of flat black here Okay, again, it's not flat black, it's uh, rubber black, I prefer. So you can take things like this. Okay, so if we just pick up a little bit of this. Little thing, so I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, uh, everywhere wouldn't be uh, just sort of, you know, grazing that in there. So we're just picking out little tiny bits of colour here. So we're using a very small brush. We're just going to do these little heads. Okay. Sorry, this brush is definitely not the best for this. Okay, so we can just pop around and do things like that. And you might think, okay, got a little bit of a coupling there or a hose join or something else like that. All right, and we're just gonna put that in black there. And we've got a couple of other little ones here. Okay. So we're just gonna pick out very small little details Okay, just to liven this all up just a little bit. Just a little bit of black on these guys. And okay, this is completely my own way. Now these are adjoined uh, items that we can just 
car over the top of these. Okay, and the same is going to happen on this guy. All right, and literally we're just going to pop around, touching in these. And we might come in with some yellows in a minute and various things just to do it. So at the moment, I'm just looking for things like, you know, possibly it would be couplings or whatever they want to be. Just the detail up. Pop those in there like that. Okay. And then what I'm thinking, actually, whilst we do this, I'll just grab a little bit of dark iron. Okay, so we've got a little bit of dark iron just here. We're going to pick out some of the colours, and this being dark iron should give us a very... That's completely dried out, that one. We've got another one. Uh, where are we? Stainless. Uh, dark iron. <coughs> that's got some in, might help. Okay, yeah, that's better. Alright, so we just clean that off. Grab a little bit of this. Okay, the thing with the dark iron is, in theory, we should be able to leave some, buff some. That's my theory to this. Okay, so we're just going to grab this on. Just going to do a couple of little areas with it. Just to have a play. Alright, so. Okay, just over the top. Things like that there. You can do it on this one, although technically the others are all going to do in reverse. So we just do that top area. Okay, just a little bit. Popping round some of these little areas. Okay, and then what we're going to do is this guy here. I'm going to do this all iron on the top, and then we're going to buff it hopefully to get back our colour okay so that's just going to come around just down like this yeah very lightly just over these hoses just coming up there perhaps this little guy here all right, and as this stuff dries back, we can then come in and we can buff it slightly, okay? So we're just going to pop a little bit just down here. And so by the time this has been buffed and got the wash on, it should give us a nice detail. Okay, so that's those down there like that. And as I say, you sort of just pick out any areas you fancy these in but now this has been put on and done you're just going to rub your finger over it and we can buff it metal okay and that's the great thing with this it'll be a nice dark iron color just down like that and then just for argument shake just to show you this stuff in action okay this is the dark greasy color okay Need to wake my brush up just a little bit. Okay, and then all we could do is you're literally just going to come along like this, and then we're just going to put it in as a wash. Okay, and let it flow and do all its stuff, making all the details pop out quite deep that's why we're using quite a bit of the wash down in here okay, bit around the back bit all down in there okay and there we go and it should dry back quite nicely so if we just do one of these as well and then what we're going to do is just going to come back in then again with other uh, colours of the wash, got the greasy colours and all the things like that. And this should give us our nice different shades and things going down in there. Just like that guy has got just down there. And 
this guy here. So just giving this a rub. And obviously don't forget, you can come back in with dry brushing to go around it as well. We shouldn't have any problem with enamels with Bandai plastic because we have given this plenty of coats of protection. Okay. Right over. There we go. Something looking just like that. Okay. And then obviously you could pick out other colors. So this guy over here, we've got is this more browny color. Okay, you can just pop in different areas just to add different colors and various things just to break this up. Okay, just to give it a different hues and shades so it's just not looking like one dark area. Okay. And then this guy, if we show you on here the different with the dark and the, the light. This one's your more of an oil grease colour. I will colour it back in, but this is just to show you how quick and easy you can do. And there we go, that's both of those. But you see the dark one gives you that natural shadowing in, whereas the other ones don't. Okay, so we just bring this down just a fraction. <coughs> Okay, so with those, as you can see, they got a very nice sort of hue to them. This guy down here, which I put a bit of down on this back area. And that's why sometimes it's nice to have a couple of different colours of washes just to break things up. You know, and stop everything looking a little bit two dimensional. So these guys down here, we just come in, pop a bit of this down in here. There we go, looking just like so. So it really livens them up, really brings it to life. Okay, this one over here, because it's just a little bit too browny, so it's gonna pop over the top with our normal wash, just to discolor and move it round. This guy, I'm just gonna give it a little bit more just down in here. And so sometimes this stuff fades back and it's just a little bit more to get it all to go. So a little bit more dark down in here. It'll just help make things pop, jump out and look that little bit more detailed right the way over. Okay. So there we go, that's those. how we're gonna handle those. That's them done very nicely. We'll just let them dry. They're not gonna take long. They're probably gonna take about half an hour or so. All right, I'm not gonna do oils right the way over this one, but I am gonna come back and do selective ones after it's had a wash, because the next thing up, this one's gonna have a wash. Okay, so what we're gonna do, just clear this away, set this up, get the wash sorted out. We're gonna use two colors of wash. We're gonna use a rust, and we're actually gonna use a black to give us some really heavy duty weathering. Okay, so those are drying now. So now we can actually get on with the body parts themselves. Now, the easiest way to do an overall one is using obviously the Floyd Models Clay Wash. I just find it's simple, job done. You walk away from it and you've got no risk to it. So if it doesn't look right, you can actually take it off. Now, if you look at Millennium Falcon, the way it's weathered, it is got that sort of deep down, heavy look to it. But it also, it's got a slightly different weathering technique to perhaps what you would normally see on armor, aircraft, stuff like that. As in, it's almost um, smudged grime. It's not just like pitted grime and stuff like that. It's a lot of streaking, a lot of, you know, grime sort of fading in uh, and sort of rubbed in dirts and stuff like that, okay? So trying to recreate that with uh, certain of our normal weathering techniques is gonna be a little bit difficult. So for this time, what we've actually done is we've got down here basically a satin finish, all right? Now the decals are a little bit more glossy than anything else, as you might imagine, but that's part of the reason as well, so it wipes off clean off of those, all right? 
because we're going to do other things to give it sort of more detailed areas. But because it is, as you can see, panels everywhere, we can probably get the wash to cling in around the edges of it quite nicely. Okay, so because it's a piece of junk, it's supposed to be that sort of weathered in, uh, dark colours, and also a sci-fi thing, we're going to use black. Now, normally I don't use black. This is one of those rare occasions where I think the strong, heavy cut lines around it will really make it pop. And um, to give it that sort of, you know, authentic, rusty type look to it, we've also got the rust out as well. So, usual thing with this, we're going to decant it down into a bottle, into a little cup. I've got a little shot glass. All right, so we'll start off with that amount. All right, and then we've got our brush. Now we're using quite a big brush because we want this as an overall effect. So if you look at it when it washes on the side, you want it to be nice and smooth and good. All right, and then all we're going to do is going to go everywhere with this. Okay, so we're just going to brush this all into all this detail. Okay, and using a bigger brush to get it into this because we need to get it absolutely in everywhere okay and there's so much nooks and cracks and crannies in here to try and get this in all right uh, that i think even if you used to airbrush it on unless you're going to flood it you're not going to get it everywhere okay but the whole point of this is to have a really heavy duty look going on so usual thing this had a couple of coats of gloss but that was yesterday so it's nice and dry now now as i said it's like a satin finish so it's going to grip but it's going to come off quite easily it's not like when we've done in the past where we've done this over a dead flat finish uh, and all the rest of it okay so we're just coming in brushing this all around and getting it into all these details okay which obviously you could use your traditional oil ways of doing this, but you'd have to be very careful brushing this stuff around to get it in all the capillary uh, into everywhere and everything else like that. All right. So this is coat one and this is going to have two coats. So we're coming in now with obviously just coat one and this is to really give us our outlines to everything. Okay. As we're going through. All right. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, just make sure it goes in everywhere. Okay, you don't want any clean spots because otherwise they are going to show up like the proverbial barn doors. Okay. Just if you get any areas where perhaps you've got like a fingerprint showing through, just try and give it a bit more and you'll find this stuff will eat through it. Okay, I'm just going to flip over and we can do this underside just down in here. Right way over. Okay, just a little bit on this edge, just so it all blends in. Alrighty, so that's one on. So what I'm going to do, carry on with the other side. I'm going to put this completely on as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pop out in a moment this clear part down the back so we can paint and weather in around the exhaust area because obviously we don't want that getting too mucky. All right. So what we'll do is we're just going to carry on popping this round on these. Again, we don't have to worry about going down into those because we'll take care of them afterwards. But coming in. But all of this detail on the sides down here, we can go in. Okay, just going to brush it all into it. And then what we can do is we can come along and detail it afterwards and pick out colours with the rust. And actually with the other colours of wash, if you wanted to, you could get in there and, and do it all with those. Okay, so we're just making sure you go around absolutely everywhere though. Getting into all these nooks and crannies and all the details because you don't want anything missed out. Okay. Okay, so this has been on for roughly around about five minutes, five or ten minutes. Okay, and you can see it's still wet in some areas. So what we're going to do now, before this totally dries, we're going to come in with the rust. Okay, so what we're going to do, we give this a bit of a mix up. And we take our rust wash, which, as the name would suggest, is basically just a 
warm rust color okay so it just sits in there just like that and then we're going to take a smaller brush okay grab a bit of the rust okay now technically it's not rusty we're just trying to give little effects so what we're going to do is just going to blend in so we're just going to put some of this in some of the areas so we're just going to put a bit of rust wash down into some of these areas just to let it bleed in you know around some of the hoses perhaps down some of these but we're not going everywhere with it we just want the colors to slightly mix okay so we're just gonna pop these in and just give them a little rub to get it to go okay but the idea is you can the colors blend bleed mix okay and it will just give us a slightly different from being black tone on everything okay so we're just going to pop around some areas so we're not going everywhere with it we're just trying to perhaps pick up some of the the areas that are a little bit perhaps darker but as you can see you can blend the the colors together all right so i'm just going to pop a little bit just down there a little bit just down here Okay, just, just trying to change colours up a little bit, just mix them up, let's put a little bit around here. Okay, just to, and what this will do is stop it looking too black and white. Okay, we'll give it a little bit of colour just in these areas, and I'm not saying for a minute it's rusty, it's just that it'll give it a more aged, weathered, perhaps look to things but the black because it is so strong will take control okay so for instance if I just grab a bit here and put it in here if we mix these colors together as you can see it just turns it very dark okay so when you're trying to mix the rust wash in with anything else you don't have to worry too much okay perhaps a little bit just up around these pipes just to streak it around just like that and then obviously we'll repeat on the bottom just in the bigger more structural areas shall we say okay and then if you did like here's dried to be honest a bit quicker than I thought I thought we had a bit more time on here so what I'm going to do I'm going to whip around in a moment with the black I'm going to go over it because otherwise because it's dried the last color on will be the one that's more pronounced okay and obviously we don't really want that we want the the more darker color than we do this rust on top so i'll show you i just whip around these okay just popping it around in some of these areas okay just down in here a little bit going on around here lots of that around there okay just in on here perhaps this we just want this to bleed all together okay just a little bit because what i'm going to do is going to redo that section okay so that's all in there and then to be honest i'm just going to pop very light bits here and there just around in this uh areas with the this will just dry back and it will just give it slightly different colors that's what we're saying we're just trying to break it all up just off of that initial one so some of them you can dab at it to give you more solid colors others perhaps you might want to come in but what we're going to be doing with this is a lot of also another technique which i do with a wash which is dry brushing it's actually wet brushing it off okay so you actually come in with water to thin to remove where you think it's too strong okay and then say so this is dried a little bit faster than i thought it would so some of it we might end up leaving other bits we might want to take off okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to pop around areas and say no right or wrong to this this is it will dry lighter but you might notice it gives a a far nicer look to it just like that okay so we're just gonna pop a little bit just down these pipes 
just down this edge. But you could come in if you wanted to, obviously with things now, if you want to do like rust washes and all those good things, as well as using darks, grimes, what you wanted to do. But this area here, for my liking, is far too strong. So all we do, we're just gonna come back with the black. Okay, so we've got a little bit of black on here. We're just gonna dot some over the top and it will bleed in together. Okay, so in here you think just a little bit, perhaps too much. In the back here, we want that to be slightly darker. We can just pop this in. Okay, so when this dries and you're removing it, it'll all come in. All right, so there we go. Have that a bit better. More happy with that. But say we want some of this rusty stuff. Like, um, you know, you can see the difference between the two now. You've got the different ways of doing it. We want some of this rust to come through. And say, I didn't want it just to look like white with black patches. We're going to let this stick on a little bit as well. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit just in here. Just a bit on these activators. A bit on the floor if we can get it in there. Just so it all blends. Hopefully we'll get this way. I'll get the brush in there. Yep, that's handy. To the floor, so he's painting it. All right, so there we go, that's those doing. So, usual thing, we're gonna leave this for around about half an hour, let this totally dry, and then we can literally work it off. Then we can come back in with perhaps more, more detailed, more refined, we can use washes, uh, we use the clay washes, we can use enamel washes, things like that, really just to sort of, you know, accentuate, make details pop out and everything else. Then we can come back in with dry brushing, then we've got to do quite a little bit of detail work. So we want to put on some proper streaking, some proper things, which we're going to do a lot with the washes you'll see in a moment, but we're going to add some more depth to this one yet. So we've still got a long way to go. <laughs>